respected chairperson eminent scholars and friends so as the title shows i am presenting on juna khatia and here means it's actually joint presentation by me and my colleagues my colleagues and my friends with whom i am uh, working for the last 3 years at the site so first uh, first of all i am thankful to dr prabhakar vn prabhakar for inviting us to present uh, about our research here and also i am thankful to uh, dr abhen gs my uh, co director of the project and also the friends who are working on the materials from the site uh, then also to the villagers and my teachers and mentors and especially to asi for giving us the permission to excavate the site and also the midra state archaeology department which always support us supports us okay so junakatia is located in kachh district here you means okay one second so it is in the western part of kach it is very near to the uh, it is in lakpat taluka we are very near to uh, ancient uh, city of lakpat and the site was discovered in 2016 during an uh, exploration exploratory work by our team and means it was an accidental discovery and uh, then in so in 2019 and in 2020 and 22 our team has covered the site with the Uh, permission from archaeological survey of india and we excavated four localities at the site these are the locality 1 locality 2 locality 3 and locality 4 and during the exploration in 2016 we got these kind of ceramics from the site and which these ceramics shows very good uh, similarities to the ceramics from the amri region amri region and means it can be roughly dated from 3200 to 2600 bc and some and also we got means uh, some research slip uh, vessels and uh, there there is very means uh, that appears to be more regional to the kach region and this is the locality one there means we excavated around 24 trenches and the locality this locality two then there means uh, tr trenches means here means i am just uh, there is mainly to uh, kind of keep the control of the excavation means we are using actually we are doing horizontal excavation of the burials and here we means we dug around 10 means uh, trenches and in locality 3 we excavated around 52 trenches and in locality 4 we excavated around 60 trenches and totally means in total we excavated around 197 burials and here i am giving them names like burial structures means they have some kind of stone alignments and that we had around 116 and there were pit burials and there actually means do i am saying them as pit burials because uh, there are some of them are located in the uh, agricultural field so many of their means these structures are gone and so means we are not sure about are there means are there means the real structures around that so picture we have pit burials then cluster of pottery and uh, then some cluster of stones then burial without any indicators means only means we are getting uh, uh, skeletons and also cluster of shell bangles totally with that come, come across 197 and this means okay this burial structures are actually very different from the burial structures we found in any of the uh, pre urban harappan sites in the uh, greater indus region and here you can see even the rectangular burials uh, some of them have uh, what is a uh, stone paving some of them were without paving and the kind of stones they were using were also different and usually they use sandstone and shale and sometimes they were using big blocks the small blocks i am just skipping through this thing because i have to limit the presentation within 15 minutes so here you can see means and the size of these burials some of them were 7 meter long and some of them were very means 2 meter long and some were 1.3 some were 1 meter so means there were means okay variation lo a lot of variation the sizes were also and number of vessels were also varying in some cases one some two three commonly means 6 7 and maximum up to 59 vessels Here can, and here you can see this is one of the big, uh, biggest burial structures it have a length of around 6.9 meter and within that means burial boundary inside only 80 cm breadth and another burial structure here you can see the long one and there in the inside you can see and it has a step kind of feature they given within the burial then 
you can see means okay with uh, the megalithic kind of the huge boulders were used for making certain kind of burials. Then the typical Dolavira kind of structures. But means okay, here, here though we I am saying the site as a pre-urban harapan site. I am not saying that all the burials belong to urban harapan or pre-urban harapan. Definitely some of them might have been coming to the urban harapan phase. So but we need dates to fix that. Then the small burials, here you can see you know, some are means 1 meter and 1.3 meter, 1.6 meter, those kind of small burials. And in the, may, one thing we notice that mainly in the, in the small burials, the associated vessels are also small. In, even they use small bangles. And this is another kind of burial. In here, the uh, different feature is that for the payment of the means, pit, they use different kind of soil. Here you can see. And there means oval kind of burial. That means when we removed the, uh, the stones, then there was only some uh, rectangular kind of structure was there. Then when we removed that, only some stone pavements, and then a very narrow box kind of burial. So it was it meant for a kid? It was only to uh, bury some bone pieces. We are not very sure. Then another small burial. It was like that only. Only means removed the stones, a big sandstone block below some vessels only. Then a human uh, full skeleton. Actually, means we, though we excavated 197 burials, we got only one full skeleton. And that also it means actually the soil, is, the soil is very acidic in nature. And means in many cases, we will be getting four, four or five teeth, some bone fragments, like that only. Another burial. Here, you mean the skull, skull portion is missing. Then a pit kind of burial, here you are getting means, here you can see. Then a cluster of stones, when we removed the stones, it was like this. A large number of uh, burial holes. Then here, another burial here, you can see only means, okay, four or uh, two or uh, two stones just keeping in one side and near to that only two, three small vessels. And another one, just remove the stone. Then. then in some cases, they just put stones like this in this way. Actually, it is like, it's okay. They deliberately done these kind of burials. And below these things, we found these kind of burials. And in some cases, within the pots, we are getting more points, other pots. One example is shown here. And then double chambered, the L-shaped burials. Here you can see. In usually means, okay, in, you know, though we have two chambers, but in only one chamber we mainly got the burial goods. And here another burial. Here you can see this actually L-shaped burial, but later they constructed a small child burial in here in one corner. So that's why one corner of that burial is cut. And here also in the L-shaped burial, in the middle of middle portion, there is a small partition kind of a stone is there. You can see here. So it might be due to some kind of the pressure within the earth, or probably the earthquake or something. So it is used in the middle portion, this body. And we also got some means, probably some evidence for uh, cremation, but we are not very sure because the bones are charred, some warping marks were there. And Dr. Veena confirmed that thing when, we, when she was looking at the material. Then means, here actually means, a two, means actually two skulls are here in one burial. In one L-shaped burial, here you can see two skulls in this one. Then, a cattle burial. Within the burial structure, you can see a cattle. Here means, in the whole in the, in the, in this context, in my knowledge, we are not coming across any kind of these kind of burials. But uh, in Mahargar, we have, we have been to the evidence of uh, pits filled with uh, the uh, god, god gods. But in, in this these kind of burials, we never came across. But we have to, we are we should be very careful because uh, we are not sure about the date and we are waiting for the dates and those things. Then only we can announce okay, it belong to urban uh, pre-urban or urban or let later phases. We are waiting for that. 
then associated with this burials mainly some bangles we also got sometimes you can see here look at the position of the uh, skeletal, uh, skeletal remains there are some of them looks like split but we are not sure so here means in they were wearing hands I means bangles in both the hands here you can see in, that is drawn in, in the, uh, here so in some cases they were they were wearing 19 bangles in one hand one hand in one burial there were total 24 bar, uh, 24 shell bangles maximum width of a bangle was max uh, 5 cm it is not the diameter width width there were narrow bangles also narrow medium size and then then shell beads also we got in one burial 155 shell uh, shell beads then two or three terracotta beads, one or two means, actually it means they looks like uh, lapis, but we are not sure, but not very dark, uh, blue color of them. Then also uh, one stone bead, uh, when Professor Kana looked into that material, he, he was uh, telling that it belonged to late harapan period, that shell bead, that is actually got from the surface. <laughs> then from the side, on the, from the surface we got large number of stone blades and a debitage of stone blade manufacture. From the burials, we even got a single uh, stone blade. So all these made, were made of child stone. And also one raw Richard blade we got from the place. The, the material looks like the raw Richard. Then there were some portraits having the Harapan script. They were from the surface and also some grinding stone fragments from the surface. Then large number of vessels, and also from the from location one to location four, there were changes in the vessels also. In mainly in the location one, they were using cups and smaller vessels like beaker and vases. But when it went to location, when we went to location three, they were, they were big jars. And also the orientation of these burials, there were no specific orientation. There were, some of them were in east-west direction, some of, were in, some of them were in north-south direction, and some of them in between these axes. Here you can see the vessels, a few are there. We got thousands of vessels from the sites, at least means 400, 500 complete vessels in our collection. And there are large number of research slip were there at, the bury, at these burials. Here, this one is a, 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 a bottle, and here also you can see the shapes. Then, uh, right now we have only one radiocarbon date that also forms one uh, shell bangle from the side. It goes to 2850 BC, so well fit in the urban urban ways. And also, we tried with one of the seeds we got from the flotation, and actually that's what, that was a modern one. And that was only belonging to 2009 or 2010. Then means, okay, so if the bury this cemetery was such a big one, where, the, where they were staying? We looked, we done very thorough survey in and around the area, and we got three small sites. One happens, one is happens much potential site, having a size of around 60 by 60 meter, but that, uh, uh, that site is not enough for the, such a big uh, burial site like this one. And from there we got typical early Harapan burial, uh, early Harapan structures, residential structures, but this is within the uh, forest region, so I am not sure that we will get the permission or not. So these are some of the materials from the site. Then another site, Padabad, that is almost one and a half kilometer away from the site, there is also a small site. They were highly disturbed on, and there we got some pottery. Some of the pottery uh, looks very similar to the pre-urban Harappan uh, pottery, and some are even uh, urban and post-urban nature. And another site, it is Lakhapur. It's also one and a half kilometer away from the site, and here also some vessels looks uh, pre-urban, and some most of them are urban in nature. So means when we, we encountered the villages, there was a means, habit of they, means, they were uh, cremating the dead bodies from nine villages, or means of the, they used to do the death rituals in a, a small river there, in, from nine villages. The 
farthest uh, village was almost 30 km away from the place so there is a possibility that this burial ground might have acted as a burial place for different villages or means it might be used by different group of people of different time periods so we need to so or the different localities or different directions might be showing of the different uh, customs or whatever it is so we need to understand a lot of things from the site so studies are still going on so hope that hopefully by means next coming two or three years we can say something um, out of this thank you thanks a lot